Hey, cannabis traders and investors checking in on the sector as we have a bit of a Hail Mary shaping up for the bulls as far as the short term as we look into the NDAA and the possibility that SAFE is going to be added to it. And bulls certainly need a catalyst in their favor in the short term. We'll see where we stand on the charts and what we're looking at in the short term. And I'll also go over a trade of mine that I made today and how I am navigating the sector. So before we get to the charts, just a little bit of a recap of where we stand. We had a little bit of a mini short squeeze a couple weeks ago and significant bullish action. Everybody got all excited. Little bit of social media traction and attention and then a big fade. We gave back way more of that move way faster than the bulls wanted to see. That was a bit of a red flag. And we are currently definitely in a news driven market environment and we're in a bearish market environment overall. We know that when we're in a bearish market environment, good news is ignored. And we'll look at Germany being disregarded as far as Germany legalization and bearish news is highlighted. It goes the other way when you're in blue sky breakout and euphoria, the smallest little bull news is the biggest deal and everybody goes crazy over it and bearish news is ignored. So we're just in a bearish market cycle. So the reaction to news and to the broader market is such still at this point. What we're looking for in the short term that is likely going to dictate how we head into the end of the year is going to be the SAFE Act and whether or not it gets added to NDAA. Myself and the market as a whole is anticipating that it's not going to be added into the Senate version. That being said, there is a possibility that it gets added. I think it's, what is it, reconciliate reconciliation that it can be added. And essentially, my understanding is that these other subcommittees can add it. So that's what we're looking at in the short term. If it gets added, these setups are not terrible. And I'll look at them in a second and, and talk about these weekly higher lows. Because if you remember a video that I did as this bull breakout was taking place a couple weeks ago, I said, remember, we have to change the weekly trends. And I even said that as we're seeing that weekly consolidation, everybody's going to get bearish again. And everybody's going to say, oh no, are we about to hit fresh lows? And that's when we set the weekly higher low. So that is the hope that the bulls are looking for here and having a catalyst like safe to set that weekly higher low would quickly turn this into a really good setup as far as longer term trend changes because at that point if it were to happen and if we get a bullish reaction we would have weekly and daily uptrends which would be a very drastic shift from the weekly and daily downtrends that we've been in for six months at this point so that is what everybody is looking to in the short term i believe the senate reconvenes November 29th, and over the next couple of weeks, that's what we're going to be looking for as far as headlines. We had a little bit of a bump recently where we had this letter signed by, you know, five individuals from one of the subcommittees, and the market went up a little bit, or I should say the sector went up a little bit in response to that. But, you know, the first thing I did was looked up every single name on that list and marijuana in Google, and every single one was pro, clearly pro marijuana. So, for me, there wasn't really any new information with that letter. And it's not like, you know, Schumer is going to pick up this letter. Schumer is going to pick up this letter and say, oh, well, I guess I better change my mind about this. So if we get safe in the NDAA, we're looking for weekly and daily bullish uptrends and notable follow through. That being said, I mean, this is looking way into the future. It's a move that I'm going to be looking to short eventually because again, when you get a bullish reaction to that kind of news, you react real quick, you know, five trading days and things start to get priced in significantly. And then you have to look at, you know, what is the time frame for apps for actually implementing anything that's going to be in safe, any kind of uplisting. And you're looking, you know, months again. So the, the news that's related to the sector is on a monthly time frame, but we're trading on a daily basis. So we have to just keep that in mind, bigger picture, but let's not even go there. Let's take it one step at a time, safe, and whether or not it's in the NDAA. If it is not added, we're going to likely test the lows. What I would be looking for a bullish sign on NDAA, not including safe, would be a break of the lows with zero follow through. That would tell us that sellers are just exhausted. There's nobody left to sell down here. And I would be looking for a potential bullish reaction to a bear break with no follow through. But for, for now, we're just gonna be monitoring the headlines because that's what's gonna be most significant here. And now we have the broader market dumping today in a big way, and we're not really down much in cannabis. I'm seeing ACB green, uh, green thumb closed green, MSOS slightly red, but only half a percent. You know, the IWM 
was down 3.7%. The S&P 500, 2.2%. Financial sector, 33 So the broader market got crushed and the sector did not. But the sector has been weaker than the broader market for a significant amount of time. Why aren't we getting crushed? Well, you can look at it as the market learned a lesson last time around. When the COVID dust settled the initial time around, we then ran 500 to 1,000% on a lot of these USMJ names. Why? Because now we have a precedent where these are essential businesses, they're gonna remain open. So as far as a sector is concerned, you know, you have your stay at home names like Netflix and names that do well in a, a COVID environment. And now that we have this new variant as the new narrative for the bears in the broader market, the sector can look historically and say, well, you know, we did well the last time around and the stores stayed open and people kept buying and our numbers were good. So it's not really the same kind of fear for this sector as it is for others. So I personally, you know, the best time you could have possibly bought this sector anytime in the last year and a half was after the initial COVID fear dust settled. And so what I would love to see is if we see further weakness in this market related to this new COVID strain for that to lead to a notable market pullback but then once the dust settles to be looking for the potential that cannabis would see a solid reaction once the broader market started to bounce again, once we reach a, a bottom to this reaction. That being said, we also have to be looking at tax loss selling. So people that are gonna be looking to harvest losses in this sector, because again, with where we stand in the broader market, if you have any kind of portfolio, you're up a lot in a lot of places and you're pretty much only down in cannabis. So what a lot of people will do is, you know, if I'm up $10,000 in my tech names from trades I've taken this year, and I'm down $7,000 in my MJ positions, I can sell my MJ positions and alleviate 70% of my tax liability for the year by offsetting those gains. So that's what the tax loss selling is as we head into the end of the year. And it's something to be aware of. You know, the setup is there for that to be something that has an impact. If we were to see safe added to NDAA, I would not be concerned at all about tax loss selling. So really that's the short term headline that we are watching into the end of the year. And if it does not get added, it is a little bit bleak in the sense, you know, what's our next catalyst aside from a, a surprise buyout or a surprise whatever for the sector. I mean, we're really looking to the fall of 2022 as the next meaningful catalysts. So have to keep that in mind as well. So let's now look at the charts. Bigger picture, we got ACB still a lead Canadian MJ bull. Why is it the lead? Because again, just look at our multi-month lows. So if we're looking at our seven plus month lows, where do we stand compared to them? And the answer for ACB is we're still well above them. So to get down to that multi-month low, we would need a drop of 14%. CGC came within half a percent of the multi-month low today. So it's a very different setup. And technically speaking, ACB is still in a weekly uptrend. It has a higher low at 643, and we just held that level. Bulls are defending it right now. Double bottom at 648. So 643 is still holding on any kind of daily bounce here. We're going to be scouting a daily lower high. The size of this pullback is significant enough where on this current bounce, anything under 869 is a daily lower high. The last thing the bulls want to see is a daily bounce set that lower high and break 643 support because then we lose the weekly uptrend, we confirm a daily downtrend and we're looking right back down at our 585 lows. So what the bulls wanna see, and again, this is where we look at retracement sizes, Alt F on trading view, measure from the high to the low. The bounce hasn't even really started at this point, but if we get some bounce follow through, anything that is 382 retracement or less shapes up a possible bear flag. The bulls always wanna see 50% plus retracement to create the space for a higher low to form once the bounce tops out. So I will be watching retracement sizes, but bulls have a lot of work to do to even get this daily bounce going. ACB has to get over 694 for us to even say, okay, daily bounce finally underway after dropping for a week and a half from our recent highs. CGC is grinding the low, 1131. And this is just a mini version of what I was talking about, a bear break with a lack of follow through. So 1131 is the only support level nearby. And last Wednesday, we broke it with zero follow through straight into a 7% bounce. So that would be what I would be looking for on a bigger picture time frame if our recent lows break bearish on safe not happening with no bear follow through. 
that would be notable for me. But for CGC, lower high every day. And again, it's 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 easy for bears right now. We've got some traders with the chart guys here who are shorting CGC every day, as they should, because they keep having an easy go of it. Look at the high of, of what was this, Tuesday? And then look at Wednesday. We reject by three pennies. I can make a bearish entry, have tiny risk, and then the reward was significant to the downside. It happened again today. High of the day is 11.69. We double top at the high of the day. We break it by a penny with no follow through. Anybody that shorts against the high of the day and gives themselves a few pennies of wiggle room, you know, I short at 11.62 and my stop is at 11.72. We drop down 3% plus to a new low of the day. And granted, at the end of the day, I would have stopped out. But at that point, there is significant opportunity to make gains as a bear. So as long as you keep rejecting from the high of the previous day, the bears remain extremely comfortable entering their bearish positions. You have to teach the bears it's not easy. You can't do this every day. You got to punch them in the mouth with a big move up, which the CGC bulls just have not been able to do. We never changed the daily trend. We went straight from the low up to the high and we gave the entirety of the move back. There was no daily higher low and higher high to see a trend change and follow through. Right now, we're watching that pattern of a lower high every day. Today was a daily inside bar. The bulls would need a break of 11.77 for the daily bounce to be underway. And again, it's the same thing with the bounce retracement. Is it a weak bounce for a bear flag? Is it a big enough bounce with a 50% retracement to shape up a daily trend change attempt? Those are two very different scenarios, and the bulls need increasing bull volume on any bounce for us to have any confidence in that bounce. But again, bears will be waiting to short a daily lower high in this sector. There's just so much space for it to form, and the bears have been doing so well in this sector that we know they're waiting. TLRY, trying to hold our base of support. There's a nice base here. We've held it a bunch of times. 998, 1010, 1016, 1022. So if we're going to get any kind of bounce going, the bulls have to get over 1105. And again, then we just watch our retracement size and it's up to the bulls to hold this recent low because it would be a weekly higher low. But again, if we're talking a longer term shift, we have to hold the low and break 1395. And that's a long ways away at this point. So right now it's just setups of bulls trying to defend supports. And the only bullish entries down here are bottom fishing plays where same as top fishing that I just pointed out with CGC, you're making a play off of support if it breaks, you stop out without a huge amount of risk. And if it holds, you have a good entry for a bounce. But that's the only setup for the bulls right now. Otherwise, the only bullish entries are people with some inside information about safe or extra hopeful about safe. But right now, the broader market is not, I shouldn't say the broader market, the sector overall is the way that it's trading, it's not pricing in safe. So we can anticipate that if safe were to happen, the market would have to price it in and adjust for that, which would mean upside. Cron is a lead bear. Ever since their lack of filing financials fiasco, the bears have had complete control. Again, tons of space for a daily lower high next time we get a bounce going, but right, right down to new fresh monthly lows by a lot. 10% of follow through on those lower lows. So Cron just like that is a lead bear. And again, TLRY has not broken the lows. CGC is right at the lows. ACB is way above the lows. So if we're looking bigger picture, ACB strongest, Cron weakest, and CGC and TLRY. See, TLRY is a bit stronger. So that's Canadian MJ. If we see safe happen, will Canadian MJ go up? Probably yes. Who will have bigger gains? It's hard to say. It's, it's honestly a bit of a coin flip as to how these sectors react to certain news events. But I personally will be looking to take advantage of it in both sectors. As always, day trading, Canadian MJs with the liquidity and swing trading, USMJ with the lack of liquidity. At this point in time, I only have a core MSOS position. After selling my aggressive positions into strength of this last bull move, that is one thing that I did well. But obviously in hindsight, if I had exited everything, it would have gone really well, but did get back some profits by holding a core position of MSOS. And I'll show you again at the end of this video how I trade around that core to stay in control of it. IIPR, weekly consolidation underway. Anything above 221.03 is a weekly higher low. EMA 12 support test, and that held the last time around in the daily chart. 
currently seeing this pullback and consolidation and did well today. Again, compared to the broader market, anything that didn't break the low of Wednesday did well. So let's see if the bulls can set a weekly higher low and stay in a healthy long-term uptrend. Losing the weekly uptrend will definitely be a red flag, but bulls are comfortable at this point in time. So MSOS, the red flag was giving back this much of the move. And again, tried to make re-entries. And I tried at $30 and stopped out when $30 broke for a small loss. And then I just said, all right, I'm done trying this sector bullish as far as swing positions and just waiting to see what the safe reaction is. As far as this daily bounce attempt, we have a current low of 26.71. The bulls have to get over 28.96 to keep this bounce going. But again, it's the weekly timeframes that we're interested in right now. We've got our low, our high. Is this a higher low? Maybe we need to break 28.96 next week. But again, we have to get over 33.80 to confirm the first weekly uptrend for the bulls since all time highs. Ever since then, it's just been a weekly downtrend, very clear. At no point were there a fake out or anything. It's just a downtrend that is now trying to turn into an uptrend and the bulls have a lot of work to do because that resistance level of 33.80 is $5 away, which is what, 15, 18%? Which again, if there's a catalyst, you can do that easy. But without a catalyst, it's extremely difficult. So weekly trend change trying to shape up and bulls need help. Declining volume is not ideal. Yes, you can make the excuse that it's the holiday weekend. Half trading day is obviously a major impact, but need that bull volume to be increasing like it did initially and have to break 33.80 for the long-term shift. So again, the last thing the bulls want to see is a break of 25.70 because then it's going to be, here we go again, bears in complete control again. Have to hold that 25.70 level. And even if we just chop around here, and again, that's something I was anticipating. Once we saw the size of this pullback, started to anticipate that we could trade within this range for weeks, just chopping around sideways a bit. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Again, at this point, we just have to say, bulls must hold this low. And even if you trade sideways holding that low, bulls will take it because beggars can't be choosers at this point in this sector. And holding sideways is certainly better than breaking support. TCNNF, so support down at 27.18. We held 27.10, so there's a little bit of a base forming here in the low 27s. And as far as the weekly perspective, we are in a weekly uptrend. Again, it's similar to ACB in the sense that it's a step ahead as far as its trend development. So we're looking for a weekly higher low, anything above 23.97. And it is a lead bull in the sector because of that fact. And again, if you look at our recent lows, multi-month lows and where we stand comparatively, we're way above them compared to a lot of other names. So we would need a drop of almost 20%, whereas MSOS would need a drop of somewhat comparable, no, half, 10%. GTBIF. So again, the weekly perspective, is this a weekly higher low forming? Bulls sure hope so. On the bull move up, I was talking about this inverse head and shoulders potential setup, but the bulls would have wanted to see less retracement for that to be ideal. Give back 40% of the bounce and then confirm the trend change. But as soon as you get back 80% of the bounce, that then becomes a much taller mountain that the bulls have to climb if we're going to confirm the trend change, have to get over 28.56. So again, you look at the current setup, you look at the broader market, and really it's, we need a catalyst if we're going to see a move back up. Unless we were to see, you know, the broader market bottom out real quick on this COVID fear and then just all-time highs and IWM back to all-time highs over the next two months, I don't think that's a likely scenario. But if the market just turned around and went all bull for the next two months, that would obviously help this sector try and shape up these trend changes. But again, that's a bit of a Hail Mary as to what the bulls need here. CURLF, weekly, trying to set a higher low compared to the low, bulls have to get over 1137. So again, the only bull entries down here are plays off of the recent lows. Because if those lows break, the bears are back in full control. CRLBF, trying for the weekly higher low, anything above 748. The setup is there for the bulls to take it. 
higher lows shaping up on the weekly. These are bullish reversal candles, but we got to get over the recent highs, 1042 key resistance, VRNOF, still very weak, gave back a ton of that move, but trying for the weekly higher low. Have to hold 986 and break 1501. So for people that missed the initial move, you know, I had friends that missed the initial move and said, okay, you're not buying now. You're waiting for weekly consolidation. Well, here it is. And here's your play off of the recent lows. And again, it's a bit of a news gamble, but at least our support levels are extremely clear with where we stand. So a little bit of a trade review. So how am I navigating things? Yes, I am holding a, an MOS, MSOS core position. And again, just to give you an example of what this size is, if this, if, if this core position went to $0, I would give back maybe 15% of my profit in 2021. 15% of my trading profit in both crypto and stocks and everything. So short-term capital gains. So that would be a bummer, but it could go to zero and I'd have no biggie. So just letting you know that it's not a big position size for me. That being said, it is big enough to be paying attention to, and I am trading around it to just constantly look to lower my cost basis. So an example of that is, you know, I'm not touching this position at this point in time. So what I do is in a different account, you know, I have this in one account and I day trade around it in another account. So just as an example today, an observation at just before noon, again, a half trading day today. So we were just before noon, we were hovering, hovering around the low of the day. And my observation was MSOS is positioned well to tag a new high of the day on any market bounce. So at that point in time, 1158, we were hovering just under 28 and 2809 resistance. So, okay, we're positioned well if the broader market can bounce. At that point in time, what was SPY doing? It was weak. It was in a five-minute downtrend, 11.58. So we're right here testing the low of the day in a clear five-minute downtrend. So I say, okay, well, if we can hold support and see a bounce into the end of the day with some short covering, I'm looking for MSOS bulls to be positioned well for that. So looking at my orders, I was doing two things. I was navigating where, okay, I said that statement, I entered MSOS at 27.91, looking for that end of the day bull move, looking for that new high of the day. I then had an SPXS position, which is a bearish S&P 500 leveraged ETF. So I placed my stop. I said, okay, well, if the SPY bulls confirm a five minute trend change, I am going to stop out of my bearish SPY position and I will ride my bullish MSOS position. So I was in two counter positions, one bear, one bull. I stopped out of my spy bear position when the five minute trend changed right there and then held MSOS. So stop loss triggered for SPXS and that was a position I entered earlier in the day with the weakness. And then I exited MSOS at 2860. Why did I exit there? Why didn't I keep holding? Well, at that point in time, we had just gone straight from 2758 all the way up. We weren't at the high of the day yet, but at that point in time, we were up almost 4% with no trend changes of any type on a prevailingly weak sector. So again, the one thing that bulls in this sector, one thing that's against them, their disadvantage is they're hoping that this is the one and they want to keep holding and they watch the bounce take place and they watch it all give back and they don't take any profit. And believe me, I've been there and I know that it's an emotional attachment to the sector that results in that. But for me, I say, well, I'm up 2% in under 30 minutes in a sector that is extremely weak. Of course, I'm going to take profit and I'm going to sell into strength. I don't care if it keeps going up. Why do I not care if it keeps going up? Because I got a core position and my account will keep going up with it. But if we pull back, the last thing I want to do is now have twice my core position and we start pulling back. And the day trade position size that I had was the same size as my core position. So the fact that I just had a, a two plus percent trade in a half an hour, the break even of my core position, the way that I view it in my mind is now 2% lower. So again, these little day trades are just constantly lowering my break even on that core position. And so now essentially it's the same thing where if, if Monday rolls around and MSOS drops 2%, 
my core position is not dropping that 2% because I just locked in this 2% of gains into the end of the day. So that is how I am approaching this space and using short-term day trade setups to maneuver around a core. And I highly suggest the people that are you know more experienced with trading to do that because it allows for a lot of things. Again, there, I don't feel any FOMO selling short-term positions because I've got a core that will benefit if the bull move keeps occurring. All right, feel free to ask any questions. I hope you had a good holiday if you are in the US, if you are Canadian. I hope you had a regular day, a good regular day. Other than that, got some recycled end of the video content here from some ping pong earlier. I gotta make some more end of video content. Feel free to ask any questions. We'll see what we get as far as any kind of catalyst. And again, there are other possible catalysts. It's not just safe, but it's not the kind of thing where I wanna hold a position and hope for a catalyst to make the trade work out. The other catalyst would be a buyout or a significant investment from an outside company, ideally, into one of these uh, MSOs because the whole sector would benefit from that. Again, similarly to what CGC did with Constellation, I don't think it would be, well, it depends. It all depends. You know, I can't speculate that much, but if it were a buyout or a significant stake being taken, that could easily lead to confirmed weekly trend changes on these names. Do good things.